My name is Nathan. I lead the people operations team at DoorDash. By way of hands, how many people are familiar with DoorDash? Okay, basically everyone, which is awesome. If I were up here a year ago, it might not be the, might not be the case. We raised a big round of, of financing uh, earlier this year, $535 million from SoftBank, GIC, Sequoia, and uh, you know things are things are taken off. Primarily focused on restaurant delivery today. Um, signed a, a, a deal with Walmart to deliver groceries recently. But the long-term vision is to own the last mile of logistics and to be able to deliver anything to your house within 45 minutes. So enough of the DoorDash commercial. Let's jump into uh, let's jump into the the, the presentation today. Um, so uh, we're going to be talking about performance reviews, um, probably everybody's favorite topic. Um, uh, we'll talk about uh, the evolution of reviews at DoorDash, um, what, those, what those have looked like. Uh, it certainly has been an evolution. And then some, um, some lessons that uh, the people ops team has learned along the way. Um, so I actually uh, have a confession. I'm, I'm not a career HR guy. I actually started my career in, uh, on Wall Street, uh, I was an investment banker working with uh, technology companies actually on uh, IPOs and acquisitions. And um, I remember vividly my first performance review. I'd been at the company, I was an analyst, I'd been at the company for a year, and I was super nervous walking into it. I didn't really know what to expect, hadn't actually gotten that much feedback on my performance. And so I walk into this review, um, sit across from my, my manager here. Uh, this is, the, Gordon Gecko isn't actually my manager, but he, he kind of looked like that, kind of felt like that. Um, and, 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 I, and I sit down, uh, we're about to have this conversation, and uh, he goes quiet, he's typing his computer, you know, give me a second. And I start getting really, really nervous, because um, it's, it's silent, and I don't know what to expect. And I start thinking about like the, uh, the experiences that I had throughout the year. Um, I was like, oh, there was that one experience where we were working on an IPO, and in a very, very short time period, put, I put together this deck positioning uh, the, the, the bank that I worked at of why we should be the, the bank of choice. Uh, didn't get any comments at all from, uh, from, from my manager. Flew out to Austin, Texas. I, get, I land in Austin late at night, and he finally has all of these edits that I'm supposed to incorporate for the very next morning, um, make all the changes, head over to a Kinko's, this is when it was actually Kinko's, and, uh, <laughs> and, and, and complete all of this, get like two hours of sleep, and the meeting goes well, we win the deal, awesome. You know, pat myself on the back, like this is gonna be pretty good. Uh, but then on the other hand, I thought about some other experiences that I had. Uh, there's this pretty uh, thorough uh, analysis we were doing. This was a waterfall analysis. Uh, the first time I had, had, I had done it before, uh, it did not go well, didn't have a lot of guidance. And I remember he was looking over my shoulder, correcting mistakes, and he was like, Nathan, what's, what's the problem here? Are you, are you stupid or something? Do you just not get this? Uh, and I was like, oh, wow, okay, that was, uh, that, that was pretty tough. So I'm, I'm, I'm waiting here in this, uh, this review, not knowing what to expect. And he pulls out this, this document, it was like four pages long of all of the feedback that I got throughout the year. Uh, we walk through it all. I get my, uh, my annual bonus at that time. And uh, the review, I would say, was like, okay. Uh, and I walk away from the conversation thinking, phew, I'm, I'm glad I don't have to go through that for another year. Okay? Um, so I don't know if anyone else has had experiences like that. Uh, some of you may. But I think that's why we hate performance reviews. Um, you know, why, 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 why do we? In my experience, the feedback tends to be pretty outdated. Uh, in that review, I think something came up from eight or nine, eight or nine months before. Um, hadn't gotten the feedback at all until that moment. It's like, okay, would have been good to know, uh, you know, eight months ago. Uh, the process at some companies can take very, very long. Uh, three to four months at times. Uh, it can be very bureaucratic, you know, lots of different forms. It's pretty rigid. You have to, like, check certain boxes. And uh, a lot of times it's not actually forward-looking. You're just spending all of this time focused on the past, uh, not as much of, like, okay, what are we going to do moving, moving forward? Um, so that's why many of us, uh, many of us hate, these, hate these reviews. But still, a lot of companies do them. Uh, many companies do them. By, by show of hands, how many people 
have a performance review like system at your at your company. Uh, okay, once again, most uh, most most people's hands. Uh, in preparing for this, I did I did a quick search of like why do we actually do reviews, and I found this beautiful slide here. Okay, it looks like it was created maybe like 20 years ago uh, of why we do reviews. You can see the the manager who lo I believe is the woman is like touching him on the elbow there, like, hey, it's okay. He's kind of leaning awkwardly, uh, awkwardly away. The form, it looks like, has just like boxes that you check. Um, so anyway, here, here is why we may do reviews. We recognize accomplishments, guide progress, improve performance, review performance, set goals, et cetera, et cetera. Um, is this the best way? This is a question that I've always had in the, in the back of my mind. So um, fast forward a little bit. I ended up, I mentioned I started in my career in finance, made a, 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 you know, a 90 degree turn to the, the world of, of HR or people ops. I'll save that story for, for another day, uh, but had the good fortune of working at LinkedIn. And at LinkedIn, uh, worked on the team that ran performance reviews for several different years. Uh, so I had the opportunity to see what that looked like there. Uh, and then made a, a career transition to, to DoorDash um, this was uh, about, uh, you know, this was in, in 2016. And while at DoorDash, uh, there were only four people on the, on the PeopleOps team when I joined. And at LinkedIn, there were, there were several hundred. Um, so very different experience. Um, so the very, very first review process we did, uh, I remember I walked in uh, to the first one-on-one -on -one I had with my manager. It's like my first or second day on the, on the team. He gives me a long list of, of my priorities. One of them is to execute our performance review uh, process that we had set up. And uh, he tells me it's in, it's in really good shape, the team's on it, it's, it's really just like uh, you know, going in there and, and, and making sure that it, that it gets done. So I feel okay, I go back and I talk to the team. Uh, they have no process at all, we have no process at all. It turns out there was nothing in place. Uh, the expectation though from the business was that we would complete this within like a, a month-ish time frame uh, and complete uh, you know, all annual merit increases, all comp increases during that window. Uh, so this is my first like, holy crap, I'm at a startup now. What, what are we going to do uh, from here? Um, so we got the team together. Um, we put together on a very, very shortened timeline uh, the best process that we could. Uh, we used Google Docs to, to, to do our, our, our cycle. So everyone wrote a self-assessment in Google Docs, uh, gathered peer feedback. Um, then managers wrote the, wrote the review. Uh, we did performance calibration. Um, I don't know if people may have been involved in that at other companies. We did the entire company in one day, and it was literally like... Uh, every 15 minutes, like a new manager comes through. Okay, here's kind of the, you know, what your recommendations are for performance ratings, feedback, promotions, comp increases. Okay, great, thank you, out the door, who's, who's next? Um, and we had very, very limited manager support uh, outside of, of emails and a wiki that we put up. Uh, I think we did office hours uh, for a couple of hours one time and it was more CYA, like, see, we did like some sort of training here. Um, and, and after all of that, we actually got some, some pretty decent, decent <laughs> feedback that this was the best review cycle that we've had. Uh, I, I will say um, the bar was pretty low. Uh, they hadn't really done too much in the past. Um, the CEO uh, had, some, had some good feedback, thought that things, were, things had gone well. But one person approached me after, and it, and it hit me pretty hard. He said, Nathan, like, I know your team worked really hard on this. This is great, but... When are we gonna have like a real review cycle? You know, like a, like a best in class one, like something that Google or Facebook or a company like that would do. Surely there's a there's a gold standard. Um, and it hit me it hit me pretty hard, and I was like, it's a good it's a good point. Like, when when are we going to do that? Let's 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 do that. And so, um, like like Indiana Jones here, I started my my, my search for the Holy Grail. Uh, at least to find the, the best review cycle out there. Surely we could put performance reviews together that, uh, that didn't suck, that people actually en enjoyed, uh, enjoyed doing. Uh, so spent a lot of time uh, looking at external data points on this topic. Talked to HR leaders at large companies, at small companies, variety of different industries. Talked to mentors of mine, uh, consultants, managers who had gone through the review cycle, so not just HR folks, 
uh, research papers, books, articles, uh, anything, anything that was out there, uh, you know, we, our, t- our team looked into uh, to see, what, to, to see what, we could, what we could do. And uh, actually, I'm going to take a, take a step back here for, uh, for a second. Um, and, and in this process, um, found a lot of different things. There wasn't actually a like gold standard review cycle. People were doing a lot of different things at the, at the time. Um, and one of, the, one of the data points that we found actually came from, uh, from work rules, uh, but from, from Laszlo Bach, the former head of people ops at Google. He said only 30% of people view their company's review system favorably, which is uh, it's kind of sad, actually. You spend all of this work putting this together, and no one actually likes it. Um, so with that, with that in mind, um, we thought, okay, maybe, maybe people are, are getting rid of reviews entirely. Maybe that's what we should do. And there's been this trend over the last couple of years to do that. Um, as I was preparing for this, looked up these companies, I believe, don't quote me on that, but I believe all of these companies have either entirely gotten rid of their review cycle or drastically changed it. Uh, and so I thought, you know, maybe there's, maybe there's something there. Maybe we, should, maybe we should give that a try. So I started talking to people there. Um, and it turns out when you get rid of a review cycle, when you rip that out entirely, a lot of times there's a void. You have to replace it with something. Uh, and managers might not do a good job in that void. And they might not be giving that feedback. And how do you make compensation decisions if you don't have, uh, don't have a process or don't have a, of a cycle in place? Um, and one of the podcasts I listened to with uh, one, of the, one of the companies up here, I won't say which one, but the, the, the chief people officer talked about how amazing it was that they got rid of their review cycle and I talked to one of, the, uh, one of the HR managers at the team, and he told me that the only worse thing than doing performance reviews uh, is not doing performance reviews. Um, and it turns out there's a lot of different, uh, a lot of different challenges that, uh, that come with that. Not saying these companies haven't found a good process, but uh, as we dug into it, didn't feel like that was something that we, uh, that we wanted to do. So I thought, okay, maybe rather than just looking externally, Let's focus, internal, let's focus internally. Let's look at our process and maybe iterating on that and finding something, uh, finding something better than just taking a, a copycat approach. Uh, so we've done a, a pretty robust survey to gather information from, uh, from folks on a review cycle. Uh, and here's what we found. So we talked to individual contributors. Google Docs is awful. Uh, so this is a theme that comes up uh, pretty, pretty regularly. They did not like that. Um, People were complained that their manager was able to rate them, but they actually weren't able to provide upward feedback uh, for their manager, which was, uh, which was a pretty, pretty valid point. Uh, many people felt like the review process was a black box, and they didn't understand how their comp increase was determined. Uh, and we'd done a, lot of, done a really good job of training managers, but hadn't been clear to the rest of the company on our, on our process. Um, turn to managers. Uh, I manage eight people, and it was really cumbersome to make eight copies of each Google Doc. Okay, <laughs> loud and clear, we hear you. No more Google Docs. Uh, people were literally going into the, the various forms. We had several forms, and it was like file, make a copy, save as, uh, and then sharing these back and forth. It was, a, it was kind of a nightmare. Um, another, other feedback, this was my first time having a performance conversation, and I could have used more guidance. A lot of really junior managers at DoorDash at a fast-growing company, um, first-time managers, people who are strong individual contributors, get promoted, have never had a difficult conversation like this, and we didn't offer them a lot of guidance. Uh, other feedback, uh, I didn't really understand the questions I was supposed to answer in the manager review. The, the questions and the forms that we used weren't actually, that, uh, weren't actually that clear. So with that information, we came back the next year, uh, to create like this perfect process, and we were so excited. At this point, we had 500 employees going through the review cycle. The year prior, we had 200, uh, so much, much larger at, at, at this point. Um, and here's what we here's what we focused on. Uh, so first, what we did was create guiding principles for our reviews. What was really important for the review cycle, and what did we want to get out of that? Um, our goals in the review cycle were making sure direct and honest feedback came from that. People needed to know how they were performing. A second point was to provide all employees with a clear path towards becoming top performers. So not just looking historically, but looking, looking to the future. 
Um, the third was to recognize and reward top performers. Uh, as that was critical, we had to pay for performance culture. And then the last one uh, was fairness and transparency throughout the process, especially when it came to compensation. So with that, um, here were the changes that we made to the, to the review cycle the next year. The first one was starting with why. So at DoorDash, we talk all the time about first principles and not just saying, oh, this other company did it, so we should do it that way, but like, why? And so explaining to people these, uh, you know, these, these, these guiding principles, why we do, why we do reviews. Uh, the second one was full transparency on the entire process. And how we did this was everything we shared with managers on the review cycle, all the training we gave to them, we gave to individual contributors as well. So everybody had an understanding on what, what the process was going to look like. Uh, the third was true, th true 360 degree feedback. Um, so you write a self-assessment, you get peer feedback, um, and then you can also give upward feedback to your manager in addition to, to getting feedback from, from that. People, people enjoyed that. We simplified the process, uh, and at least the, the questions that we asked. So each form really had three questions. One of them was, you know, what did this individual do well? And give some examples. What could this individual do to improve or develop? And a few examples. And then on a scale of zero to 10, how likely are you to recommend this person and why? So uh, a net promoter score uh, question, essentially. Uh, we also leveraged technology. So finally, we got rid of Google Docs. We used a company called Impraise, uh, which, was, uh, which was critical. This was actually a really, really tough decision. I don't know how many people have made that decision <coughs> of uh, you know, finding out what tool to use. We looked at a lot of different, uh, lot of different tools out there, and this was one that was uh, uh, very, very simple and intuitive for, for people to use, and that helped out a lot. We also had a thorough calibration. I mentioned the year prior, uh, in one day, it was kind of like robo calibration where everybody was in and out pretty quickly. Um, we now had a team of HR business partners who understood the business and the teams and the leaders, and they could sit down. And it wasn't just a conversation of, okay, what rating is this person going to, to have, but the, the, the why and explaining this individual or, or understanding this individual's development. We simplified, we went from five performance ratings down to three ratings. Uh, this can be a much broader conversation, uh, but after talking to talking to different uh, uh, different teams and looking at uh, uh, looking at research, I felt like this was a, a simplified way. So you were either among the best, which was ballpark, kind of 10 to 15 percent of the of the company. Strong was the middle performance rating, roughly 70 percent, uh, and then falling behind, uh, which was roughly 10 percent. Uh, but there was, there was no uh, you know, strict guidelines. There was no forced distribution that we had. Um, it was really just making sure that uh, you know, people found themselves in the, uh, you know, with the right rating uh, based on that. Uh, and then a critical step uh, was having manager training throughout the process uh, because we did have, still had uh, uh, even more managers at the company now at this point, uh, and many of them still not that experienced. So, uh, so what was the feedback that we, that we got from this? Uh, we also didn't have like one month to do it. We had a lot more time to, to plan. Um, one of the cool things we saw was the net promoter score, which we actually use across all the uh, offerings that our team does, so we can, we can compare. Um, the net promoter score for our review cycle was almost the same as our employee net promoter score. Uh, which was pretty crazy, given that 30% of people actually, uh, you know, don't like the don't like the review cycle at their company. We also got positive feedback on comms, trainings, and systems. 78% felt that Impraise was an effective tool, and 78% felt that the the training that we offered uh, was uh, was was effective. Uh, here is also uh, some some comments. I'm going to take a take a drink here. Give you a second to to look at those. <coughs> These were, these were themes that we, that we found throughout. Uh, so it was interesting, like one of our guiding principles was fairness and transparency. Uh, I'd never seen like the level of transparency that we, we, we went to. And there was still a lot of feedback. Like, oh, I wish we had more transparency on the process and what it looked like, uh, which was really interesting. Also wanted more manager, manager trainings throughout it. Um, one of the things we'd done too was most of the feedback was anonymous. And I don't know if people have 
have had that experience of anonymous feedback versus transparent feedback. We felt like um, letting people give uh, uh, anonymous feedback would allow people to be more honest, which may be true, uh, but a lot of the feedback we actually got uh, from the cycle was it's really hard to act on anonymous feedback. You know, like if you don't know who is giving you this feedback, if it's someone you work with day to day, if it's someone on a different team that you work with occasionally, it's really hard to make that actionable. Um, so we heard that. Uh, people said the process was much better than the year before. It was very, very thorough. Um, and my, fa my favorite quote here, that it was simple and enjoyable. People actually enjoyed, uh, enjoyed going through that. Um, so it was awesome to see. But my, my, my favorite email, this actually was sent uh, from a senior director on the team, on, on, at DoorDash to, the, to an, our entire team. Uh, I said, people ops team, in my 15 years of doing performance reviews, this is probably the most tightly run, fair, and effective performance review cycle. Managing people and treating them fairly is probably the toughest thing, and you guys are making it super easy for all of us. Please keep doing what you're doing. Um, so at DoorDash, uh, we've now been able to build a review cycle that people uh, do not think sucks and one that some people actually love, uh, as you can see in the, in the subject uh, up there. So that was awesome. The review cycle was complete. Uh, we all went on vacation uh, for, for three months, didn't have anything else to do, and, uh, and everything, was, everything was awesome. Uh, unfortunately, that wasn't the case. Uh, literally, I think a day or two after we wrapped it up, uh, our CEO, Tony, pings me on Slack at like 9 o'clock at night, and he's like, hey, uh, you know, good, good cycle, this is great. How do we make sure that we're not just doing this every six months? How do we make sure, or a year, how do we make sure that people are having these conversations regularly? Um, so we, uh, as a team, we, 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 we met, uh, we talked about this, um, and actually rolled out in uh, monthly manager check-ins. Uh, so this is something, I'm kind of looking forward now, we're at 700 employees today, so still growing quickly. Uh, we actually rolled this out today. Uh, Justin's here in the, uh, in the audience from, uh, from, from, from DoorDash. We had a manager training to start rolling this out. Basically what we're trying to do is to make sure at least once a month, hopefully more, but at least once a month, managers are having a quick one-on-one -on -one to give feedback uh, about how people are doing. We're using the Continue Consider framework, um, to, to help this out. We're leveraging in praise to, to do that as well. Uh, and we're measuring success. Managers are going to be holding uh, their, uh, you know, their leaders uh, accountable uh, as well as HRBPs. And we have a survey to, to measure this. Um, we also have moved to a, uh, you know, leveraging in praise to do real-time feedback as well. Uh, so in the moment, you can go into the tool and share feedback directly. Um, we are big believers in the four to one rule for every four um, you know, positive things that you say about someone have, uh, have one thing that's, that's constructive. Uh, as our studies have shown that uh, people respond well to very positive specific feedback. Uh, and this tool allows us to uh, the ability to request feedback. So you're not just waiting for someone to give you feedback after, but you get out of a meeting uh, or you finish a project, you can actually submit names and get people to uh, to do that, and, and we've actually shifted now our, our philosophy uh, from, a mono from anonymous to transparent. So we have scrapped anonymous feedback wherever possible uh, and moved to, moved to trans uh, transparent feedback. Uh, I wish I could say this is amazing. I don't know. We're in the middle of our journey right now, so uh, feel free to ping me afterwards. We can, we can grab coffee after if you want to chat more about the, uh, the learnings that we're, uh, that we're having from this. Um, so this is what uh, this is what we're what we've done so far um, to wrap things up. The the lessons that we've learned along the way. Uh, first off, uh, huge shout out to the people operations team here at DoorDash. Um, I have not done this all myself, although it's easy to stand up here and pretend like I did. Uh, so many good people at the team. We've built a world-class uh, world team. We're also hiring, so if you're interested, feel free, to, feel free to talk to me. I guess that's my second DoorDash commercial now. Um, but here are, uh, here are a few other lessons that we've learned uh, when, when, when taking a data-driven approach to performance reviews. Uh, the first is to, to start small. 
Um, looking at the, you know, looking at, at, at people's profiles of other speakers who are here, <coughs> there's a lot of people who've come from larger companies. You may have a, a people analytics function, maybe one person, maybe several people. Uh, we unfortunately do not have that. Starting from a, a team of four where everybody's kind of doing everything, uh, really starting small. Uh, and uh, when, you're, when you're really small as a company, a lot of the data you can gather is just feedback from, from conversations or from surveys. Uh, and you can build on that uh, as you grow. The second thing that we learned uh, is data influences, but it doesn't decide. And this is really tough as some of the metrics that we track and the feedback that we get, the comments that we receive, a lot of them are conflicting, uh, actually. People say like, oh, it's awesome. I love the transparent process. People say, others say, you know what? It wasn't actually transparent enough. Uh, oh, it was great that I could give anonymous feedback and I didn't have to worry about um, you know, someone being able to identify it. Another saying, you know what, with this anonymous feedback, I don't know what to do with it. And so the data can influence, but ultimately we need to, to make the decisions. The third point, uh, data collection changes as you scale. Um, so right now, one of the metrics I mentioned earlier is net promoter score. We use that for all of the people offerings that we do. Uh, a year from now, we will probably have a much more robust uh, people analytics uh, team, at least hire one person and, 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 and go from there. Uh, another point was uh, experimenting, then iterating. Um, so being at a, at a startup, that's the mindset that we have to have. We don't know how something's going to be received. And so you start moving from, from zero to one. You try one thing, get feedback, and, and, and go from there. Um, you know, with, uh, people talk about with startups having a minimum viable product. Um, with our team, we've had a minimum viable process with a lot of the things that we've done to, to get feedback and iterate. And then the fifth point, which is absolutely essential to all of this, is trust and credibility. So in, uh, in preparing for, for this, I talked to Leanne, who's one of, our, uh, one of our great HR business partners, and asked her, you know, why do you think that we were able to, to roll out this review cycle that was so well received? Uh, and her response was, well, our team has done a really good job of building trust with all of the leaders that we work with, and we have that credibility in order to, uh, in order to uh, you know, make a recommendation and deliver on that. And I think trust comes from you know, saying what you're going to do and then executing on that and doing that over and over and over again. So um, as, we, as, as we wrap up here, um, definitely open to, to, to taking, uh, taking any questions. Um, but uh, you know, great, great quote that I love from, uh, from Peter Drucker. Uh, he talks about um, you know, what, what, what gets measured gets improved. And at DoorDash, all of the time, we're focused on improvement. Measuring all of the different things that we roll out helps us get there. And we may not have the perfect review cycle today, uh, but we're not gonna we're not gonna give up until uh, until we get there. We'll continue to iterate. So thank you very much. Thanks, Nathan. <laughs>